So we have 10 minutes before we break for lunch. Yeah. We got a number of questions about um, what resources or practices you'd recommend to help a preacher grow in expositional preaching, assuming other than pre actually preaching. Uh -huh. Are there resources or practices you recommend to grow in this? Yeah, I think you say other than, but I just have to say practice is mm -hmm. the thing that will do it more than everything else I would say put together, I think. Mm -hmm. But you can get more use out of those times when you do preach if you have a, service, a sermon review where you have folks who give you feedback where you uh, try to listen to that and take that in. Um, I think hearing that regularly has, I'm sure, been important to my preaching. Uh, I do a sermon reading of my manuscript because I use a manuscript when I preach. On Saturday night, I'll read it to five or ten people who turn up in my study. I won't preach it. I'll just read it. And then after the intro, I'll just go around and make everybody say something. Okay, make it better. You got anything better? They start to tell me what, what they like. Yeah, I don't want to hear that. I want to know... What, how, how you can make this better. Is there a word I'm using you don't understand? Is there an illustration that's, it's just once again in the 17th century, Mark, can you give us something modern? You know, <laughs> does anybody have any idea of how a sport uh, illustration could be used? <laughs> you know, I mean, something here. Uh, you know, just anything to make it a, a more useful sermon. And uh, I, find, I find those times really useful. Yeah. Are you still doing the application lunches? App grid lunch, yeah, on Saturday where I'll take... Usually it's going to be, I'll, I'll take wannabe preachers uh, and I'll, guys who want to study the scripture and understand it and learn how to teach it, they'll all come up with uh, outlines themselves before lunch and then we'll get together for lunch, we'll go over the text, we'll come up with applications and I'll make a grid of different categories of application for each of my points and we'll try to fill that in. It's like a, a structured meditation on the text. That stuff won't all be in the sermon but it will cause me to see stuff that I wouldn't think of by myself. So application lunch, you do your Saturday evening debrief with some interns or the, no, the interns church members? Come. It's church members. Yeah. Uh, and then the service review. So break down what that looks like because a, a weekly review of your sermon sounds like hell to most of the guys in this room, I'm assuming. So what, what does that actually look like? How do you prevent it from degrading into a sort of subjective mess of I felt this way, and you should change that. Uh, well, I mean, first of all, the sermon's already happened, so they're not going to change anything about the sermon. So what you did, you did. So they're not going to mess anything up like that. Your ears and the other people there will hear some things, and they will learn by the very activity of being led to evaluate something. Even they're having to form sentences and questions and statements will be healthy for them. So they will learn more about preaching. And I know, I certainly learn things. As people say, Mark, when you said this, I thought of this. Really? I didn't mean that. And three other people go like, yeah, I thought of that too. Like, uh oh, okay. So, uh, or, you know, they, they, they'll, they'll say positive things. You know, it's like, that was a really good story. That worked well. They're always telling me that I have a really good conclusion. And then I've got a, another excellent conclusion after that one. <laughs> and then in Beethoven like I have a stunning third conclusion and uh, they said you know all three were really really wonderful we think one would be an improvement pick any one uh, I get that feedback a lot um, yeah so How, any, uh, any encouragement for the young guys here who don't have regular opportunities to preach and how they can grow as preachers yeah, l try to listen to the sermons that are preached at your church very carefully. You try to read that passage of scripture the week before. You try to outline it, see how you would preach it, then watch what your preacher does. Try to understand why he approaches it differently than you did. Feel free and ask him questions about that. He'll probably love that. Um, yeah, you can read books on preaching, listen to other people's preaching, but I would concentrate especially on just your own pastor. Do you think other kinds of teaching would help at all? Teaching a some, course seminar? Or yeah, some. Uh, if you're nervous in front of people or you're not naturally good at expressing things clearly, any practice of public teaching can help with that. Okay. Another question here is, how do you recover after preaching a terrible sermon? Uh, 
Well, I'm assuming they're feeling it subjectively that way. Yeah, hopefully you never preach a terrible sermon and since you say a bunch of false things. Right. Worship Baal this week? Pray to him. He's a good God. <laughs> well, I mean, hopefully you never do that. So It's all up from there. Yeah. So if you're saying Jesus is the one and pray to him and repent of your sins, don't do them, uh, then a, a lot of what we think are terrible sermons are our own vanity. You know, our sermons aren't as good as we think they are anyway. You know, uh, you know I think we got to be, con- we want to, we want to go, we're, you know, we're, I, I at least am very worked up when I'm, I've, I've been through the thing, I'm kind of intense when I'm working on my sermon. If the church building burns down, I'm going to have to preach that thing on Sunday morning somewhere. I mean, it just, that thing is going to get preached. I mean, it's just, that's going to be preached now. I've been, I've been working on this for days and it is coming out. Uh, and I feel like that when I preach. And that means that I tend to be exhausted after I preach. But man, I've, I've given it my Jimmy Doolittle best. We've had our raid on Tokyo and we've kept on going. And uh, we gave it everything we have. And sometimes when you put all that into it, you want to feel like, oh, that's a home run. And it's clearly a base hit at best. But you got to realize that's absolutely fine. It's a base hit. That's how most games are won. You know, I mean, just, you just keep getting up there and telling the truth. God will get the glory, especially through you not doing spectacular sermons. That's why when people have reputations as really super good preachers, I'm kind of not that impressed. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that's always that helpful. I'd rather just have really good, faithful preachers, good enough that people are happy to listen to them, but not that people are like, you know, watching a bunch of them on YouTube. You know, not like, man, I could watch Dave Chappelle or I could watch this preacher. You know, not, no, I, that's... <laughs> I don't think that's helpful for preaching the word. I think your personality can kind of get in the way. So one of the reasons I use a manuscript, honestly, is because I, by nature, as you can tell, am very talkative. And I'm fast on my feet. And I'm a little funny, though too sarcastic. But I think I could have a congregation 10 times the size I did if I had a larger space and if I didn't use a manuscript. But part of the reason I use a manuscript is to keep me tied down to the word. You know, make me a little less... Now, I think a lot of guys don't have a big personality. That's not going to be as good for them. I tell young guys often, don't use a manuscript because it makes them too wooden, too dead. Uh, but I think you want to be careful about majoring on your preaching rather than on what you preach. It's helpful. Any thoughts on a healthy rhythm between how much you preach and how much you have others preach? You know, that's been a changing dynamic for you personally over the years. Yeah, when I first got there, 52 Sundays a year, I was probably preaching 50 of them or 49 or 48, something right like that. These days I preach 26 to 30, so I preach barely over half. I, I will take that to our elders every year or two when I think about it and just say, guys, what do you think? You want me to preach more or less? I, ca- I kind of don't care. Um, I'm happy to preach more. I love preaching. I, I love not traveling. But I travel enough that, you know, I'm, I'm like this last Sunday I was here. That's unusual I'm away on a Sunday. Um, and the elders are usually, there'll be a couple who want me to preach more, and there'll be a couple who want me to preach less, so other guys have time to preach. Uh, and most of them are usually fine with the way it is. So it's, I would say the longer I've been there, the more established my preaching ministry has been there, the happier as the congregation has grown, they are to hear others preach as well. And so we just had extraordinary associate pastors and Michael Lawrence and then Brad Wheeler and now Bobby Jameson, uh, who these brothers are superb preachers. And, and we have other guys in the church. We probably have literally 40 men in our church who preach. So every Sunday, we're going to have lay members of our church out covering other churches' pulpits because they've asked for help on that Sunday. And we you know, asked Matthew Freeman, can you go preach down at La Plata? So we've got a lot of people who want to preach. And I think that happens often when you have a very clear preaching ministry. I think people hear it and they think, ooh, I would like to do that. So at this point, you're by... Half time, a little bit. Half time to a little bit more. A little bit more in the but mornings. I'm, but I'm there in the mornings. But I'm there almost every week. It's very rare. Mm-hmm. Like last Sunday, that was away. So this coming Sunday, Isaac Adams is preaching a second one from Isaiah. But I'll be leading the service. So it's clear, Dad's around. Yep. <laughs> and then in the evening, your prayer meeting. I lead. You have that. almost a, a different guy doing a sort of twenty minute, fifteen minute, fifteen minute devotional. Yeah, we had Michael Roberts do it. First time he'd ever preached last Sunday night. Maybe land on this. Break down what your personal preaching rigmarole look like, looks like week to week. 
what it looked like for you to prepare a sermon? Uh, I usually do it in two days. Uh, I will, the first day, try to get, outline the text, which is usually pretty easy. Uh, and then I try to get my sermon outline, which I find pretty hard. Uh, and I'm content with that for the first day. I then may read some commentaries. The older I get, less commentaries I read. I just find them less and less helpful. Um, the second day, I will write my intro, come up with some intro. Yeah, and Justin, are you here? Justin, I was talking to you yesterday afternoon. Justin, are you here? Uh, the intro is where I try to do the, a lot of the relating to the culture stuff. Because I'm trying to get the educated unbeliever who's there who might be a little skeptical to listen. So in that sense, I'm more like Lloyd-Jones and say Stott. You know, Stott would just like, we're in John chapter 3, verse 16. Whereas Lloyd-Jones would try to begin by interesting people. And that's, I try to do more of that. Um, and then I'll have my application grid lunch, and then I'll literally write the sermon from about three or four on Saturday afternoon until nine. Uh, and Connie, sweet Connie, will just bring me my dinner, and I'll just keep writing. And then um, at nine, friends from the church will come over, and I'll read them the sermon manuscript. They'll give me feedback, and I'll make changes, maybe. And take Monday off. Yeah, if I'm preaching, I will take Monday off. Yeah, because, yeah. because that second day for me right now is usually Saturday. Cool. Thanks so much. Thanks, we're going to break for lunch. We're going to take the next 45 minutes to grab lunch and eat, and we're going to return at 1230 to do an Acts 29 spotlight. So here's what we're going to do. I encourage all of us to go out these two doors here so we can form a line down the hall. Grab your box lunch. Just know there's actually a water bottle in there, so you're not walking around with your box asking where the water is. It's already in there. And then you can eat in here. And we also have a multi-purpose room downstairs that have tables and stuff if you want to spread out a little bit. Uh, keep in mind, if you need to recharge parking, this is a good time to do that. If you indicated you would like dairy or gluten-free, make sure you can pick that up on the coffee bar. And I think that's it. So we'll circle back around at 1230, but let me pray for us first. Father, thank you so much for the ways you're moving among us uh, this morning, and we thank you for the food that we're about to eat, and we pray that you would not only nourish our bodies, but nourish our souls with the conversations we're going to have for your glory. We pray this in Jesus' beautiful name. Amen.